with One Lens Baby. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much, Craig. I'm excited to be here. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into photography? I have always loved photography. It was something I loved as a child. I was just one of those kids who took pictures of everything. I think I fell in love with photographing people when I got into high school. I joined the yearbook committee. I learned how to develop film in a dark room. That's when I fell in love with black and white photography. From there, I continued that in college at the University of New Mexico. It was something that I constantly had on my agenda. I was part of the photography club there. I always shot film. I didn't really pick up my first DSLR until after my son was born, which was almost 12 years ago. That is probably one of the things that I love about Lens Baby is it makes me feel nostalgic in a way is that those manual focus lenses. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel like I tie it all in. When did you find your first Lens Baby? I found my first lens baby probably four years ago. I am, I'm honored to be a Click Pro elite, part of the Click community. There were quite a few photographers in that community who were photographing with lens baby lenses. I started to be able to recognize the images before I read the captions. I was like, I need to get in on this. I need to get in on what these lenses are all about. So that was my very first one was the Velvet 56. Okay. I bought that one mostly for the focal length. Because again, being a portrait photographer, I really wanted to try something different. That was my very first lens. It really pushed me outside of my comfort zone in my box, but I fell in love with it. That's the entry for a lot of people. It's more of a traditional lens as far as the way it feels and looks. So from the Velvet 56, what was the path into more lens baby lenses? After that, I bought the Trio 28. I'm a mirrorless shooter. So that was very appealing to me having the three effects built in because I felt like it would give me a really good variety of what Lens Baby had to offer. And it was just after I purchased the Trio 28 that I became an ambassador for the company. Everything just broadened after that. I bought the Composer Pro 2 with other effects, the suite I love. But the Soul 45 was a lens that just sat in the back of my mind for a couple of years. I don't know why I hesitated buying it for as long as I did because It is probably what I shoot with 90% of the time now. And I take it to all of my client shoots. I incorporate it in my everyday life. I love it. Great. Let's bring that up here on the screen. We can talk about your setup here. I love how you shot this in a way that I assume it was laying. (laughs) The back of the camera is on the ground, but it looks like it's stuck to a wall and it's levitating. It does. (laughs) But you've got the Soul 45. It has the Boca blades engaged. You're saying that despite the fact that this is a more recent conversion for you or a purchase for you, that it's on your camera more than any other lens baby. It is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, Why is that? Why would you keep this one in there? What kind of options do you like that this one has that the other ones don't? I love the tilt. I love being able to manipulate my photo how I want it but also not having control of how it's going to turn out. I love incorporating either one or two of the bokeh blades, sometimes just at the edge, sometimes both of them. It really depends on what I'm photographing. I don't typically use the bokeh blades if I'm focusing close up on a portrait. I will use them often if if it's a distant portrait or like a storytelling kind of interactive family image, something, something to that effect. Or sometimes the light will dictate if I use the bokeh blades, but the size is also phenomenal. I love that you can lock it in place, though I don't typically lock it in place because I feel like I'm always moving. So when you lock it in place, that puts your sweet spot in the center, Mm -hmm. takes some of the options away, which can be freeing right? in in my experience. But you you like that option, but you don't always, always go there. Don't always. It depends on what I'm photographing. If I'm photographing a moving family or obviously I need to be able to track them a little bit, but I love what I get. Even when the kids are out of focus, it, I love it. Some of my clients' favorite photos have been taken with this lens oh, wow. over a Canon Prime 85 or 50 because it's different. I, obviously, I take my other lenses to shoots, but I always these these are always extras. This is always something that I do. I I do for my clients. It's unanimously they are their favorite photos. I love that. So you've gone through the learning curve multiple times with multiple different lens babies. There's always a learning curve because you're getting always. a new effect or a new feature in there. Talk to me about the learning curve here for you with the Soul 45. Did you just pick it up and run with it? Was there new things to learn that, that didn't make sense at first? How was that process? There is a learning curve, just like you said in any of them. But this one, I tend to get people sometimes who are like, how are your photos looking like that? I just tell them practice. 
Take as many photos as you can, whether it's your kids, your pets. Take it out in nature. Try to photograph anything. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be people, but practice. I messed up a lot. I, met, I took a lot of photos, I, hundreds, hundreds of photos that no one will ever see. <laughs> but the nice thing about that is even some of the ones that didn't hit focus, they're still absolutely beautiful. And that's the nice thing. I think it, it's very freeing. Hmm. But I tell people all the time, make yourself practice with it. It's just like anything. So. Yeah. You said earlier that you played with it a lot. So yeah. it sounds like your process to get to the point where you're comfortable taking it to a family shoot was play. You went out there like, hey, how can I have fun with this? Absolutely. And I did play with it in client shoots as well. Mm -hmm. Once I felt like I got the shoot, whether it was a newborn photo shoot or a family shoot, I would always tell the clients what I was doing, what I was photographing with. And I still do this today. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm going to pull out this lens. A lot of my clients actually have hired me for photos taken with this lens now. But I would tell them, I say, I can't guarantee I, I'm, what I don't know what I'm going to get necessarily because there's only so much you can do with the focus peaking until I get it on the back of my camera or I mean on the back of my or on my computer. I don't really know. So I do. I think it, it's good. I But I became brave enough to be able to bring it to family shoots. So when I started bringing this lens to weddings, I thought I am out of my mind. I can't believe I'm doing this. But when you're doing detail shots, just take a breath, take a second, do something completely different. And I just photographed a wedding. I used the Soul 45 as well as a lot of the Omni. It just, it takes it to the next level. Hmm. So having the courage too, to be willing to try something different sure. is a lot of it. Let me move to your first of your three images that were shot with the Soul 45. Oh, this was not easy. This is easily one of my favorite Soul 45 photos I've ever taken. This is a young woman named Mackenzie. She is an amazing client of mine. I've done many portrait shoots with her. We wanted to do a really fun shoot at the state fair. So I had some ideas of what I wanted to do. But as, it, as the midway got a little bit darker, I thought, what if I pull this off with my Soul 45? I thought it would just be really cool if I did. So I set her up. I don't know what the ride is behind her, what it was called. But we were trying to time it as it went off. And I did use my tripod for this, I dragged the shutter. So I, I slowed it down, but I needed to be able to hit focus on her. It was getting dark. I was thrilled that I hit focus right on her. It was able to blur the background, distort everything. And it took a lot. We probably went through 12 to 13 rounds of this ride where I can see that it's coming out, but I wanna really make sure we get this. So in each one of these rounds is a couple minutes at least. So you're spending a half hour there on your tripod Easily. Easily. That's <laughs> fantastic. So you worked hard for this image. And I did. I'm seeing a state fair that has one person in it. So that's unique. I'll get them out. <laughs> <laughs> so you edited them out. I see a little bit of bokeh blade action going on in the bokeh in the upper left. So there's, yes. there's that layering of a little bit of texture happening in the lower right. Not so much. So maybe only one of the blades was engaged. I think so, You've yeah. got just tack sharp on her face there's there's a lot going on how many pretzels did or popcorn or whatever's going on there did she eat during your shoot or i think that this... bag was pretty much empty by yeah. the end <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love it i could do an animation of your 30 minute shoot i could it was funny i almost made like a little video of all of them because she kept looking back at the ride and we were trying to time it and then the colors so every section of that ride changed colors this image was actually just selected as a top 100 image by the National Association of Portrait Child Photographers for oh, 2023. Congratulations. Oh, thank that's, you. So it was actually, great. it premiered at a show in Atlanta oh, last month. I'm not surprised. That's great. Thank that's you. Great. You worked really hard on this, obviously. If you were to shoot this scene again, what would you do different? I may have pulled back a little bit farther. So the thing with the Soul 45, when you back up a little bit, you can get a little bit more in focus. I like that her legs are out of focus, but I kind of wish she was more of her whole body was in focus. Everything else faded away. But I'm still so proud of it. But I think that if I had the foresight to back up more, get more of the ride, get mm -hmm. more of her, that might have been more people to edit out, though. That seems to me that you could have <laughs> taken a lower angle of view, not backed up, tilted up a little bit to keep her face, move her face into the rule of thirds and mm -hmm. still gotten her feet and lots of blur at the bottom. But then the background wouldn't have been so blurred. All right, let's move on to the next image. Oh. Why is this image important to you? Why did you want to share it with us today? 
So that is my son. That is my little boy. I'll say, sit there in this light, do this, do that. But this particular shot, this was all him. He was done with me. He pulled the hat over his head. Part of me feels like I got a little bit lucky with the focus being so perfect mm -hmm. across his little squish. Mm -hmm. But it was also, I was ready to take that shot. I was ready to do it. I'm glad that his eyes in a way were covered because it's an anonymous photo. Yeah. But it tells the story of a child just being like, I'm done, mom. No more. <laughs> when I took it, I put it on my computer. I just was like, wow. Oh my gosh. Mm. So then again, it started building on what the Soul 45 is capable of. This is my personal work as opposed to my client work. I do yeah. this personally. It's an awesome memory. We had a lot of fun. So it means a lot to me because it's him. But it also means a lot to me because I started realizing what this lens was capable of. The fact that this came after shooting more images of him that didn't have the, this expression and some anonymity to it also brings you into a place of whether it was tension that he was relieving by pulling his, his cap down and making a face or whatever's going on, there's something real happening that might not have been happening in the rest of the shoot. Oftentimes, I find that after a little bit of time spent being inside of someone's comfort zone, that's when the real thing happens or something new happens that feels more real or unique. This is definitely unique. And like you said, it's childhood. It's real. Part of what I do for a living is document everyday life for families, people. Sometimes, yes, they're staged photo shoots, but I also do a lot of just real life photography. That's what I was missing in all those other photos leading up to this, where I felt like I was staging it too much. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't. He was being such a good subject for me. And this is simply a window light. There is no additional light source here. Mm -hmm. He was, yeah, he was just being a trooper. I think I promised him like ice cream after this. It's real. Everything He's about ready. this. And He's ready I love for it. the ice cream. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> if you were to shoot this image again, what might you do different? I think I, I would have come back a little bit more. It's so hard because this was such a, a like an impromptu image. I would have maybe had his face turned a little bit more, but some moments you just can't recreate. It's such an extreme close up of his mouth that I probably pulled away a little bit more. This is like you said, it's a moment. You can't recreate that and it is what it is. Exactly. One of the things I know I touched on black and white photography earlier, there is something about the way that the Soul 45 images convert to black and white. I'm a very high contrast photographer. Many times on my R6, I'll even go into my monochrome picture setting, see what it looks like because I want to really see where my shadows and highlights are. But this was one of my favorites in black and white ever that I've ever taken. A lot of it is the way that the grayscale fades away. Mm -hmm. I think that really lends itself nicely to black and white. The Soul 45 gives you more dramatic contrast in general. How would you describe that difference? The way that it fades, you go from having a darker, very high texture black and white to something that kind of softens into those gray scales. I think that you can get a really good range of white to black, everything in between, just because of the way the lens baby pulls the light, the way it fades the light, the way it fades texture. You can see it in the hat, how sure. it goes from that really tight knit all the way up to just this softer. So that's probably why I like it. Maybe it's the texture thing. Because yeah. texture is a big part of black and white. Let's move to your last image here. Oh. <laughs> this is precious. Thank what you. makes this precious to you? This, I haven't even shared this photo on my platforms or anything. This was a newborn shoot that I did in July. Mm. And it instantly became one of my favorites that I've ever taken with the Soul 45. A lot of the traits go back to the photo we just saw of my son. This was a moment. The session was over. It was done. The little baby, he had woken up. He was just, oh, he was a mess. He was like, what is happening? <laughs> so he was crying. The dad, he was just sitting on the couch. Again, one single window light here. So I pulled out my camera again. I had already done some with the Soul 45 of this family. And I just took it. I just took a couple photos. I'm a big storyteller with hands. I love people's hands in photos. I love the size difference when you have a dad's hands against this brand new baby. So I'm, I'm known for that. A lot of people will see that repeated in my feed, in my work. But there was just something beautiful about his hands holding his tiny body. I knew I hit focus immediately on it where I wanted it. I loved it. It was a beautiful moment. They love it. They, yeah, he was, yeah, it's, I love, I just love the emotion behind it and yeah. the realness. 
it's great to know that he was screaming his brains out because his dad has a really loving look on his face. That's our job as parents oftentimes is to just find the joy being able to be there and comfort. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was. It, it seemed, it looks like a quiet moment. It looks like mm -hmm. just a very, it was peaceful. Even babies sure. scream. It doesn't mean it's not peaceful. Newborns are one of my favorite things to photograph of all time. Again, having the confidence to, to capture a moment like that with my lens has taken me a long time to get there. So I love that. I'm curious about your philosophy around black and white. What goes into your decision? What went into your decision here to convert to a black and white? If the baby would have been in a light colored onesie, I would not have converted this into black and white to start mm -hmm. because I wanted the contrast of his outfit against the fairness of his dad's skin. The hand to me is the main focus in here, holding the baby, you catch the little light on his wedding ring. I knew it would be black and white from the start. Most of the photos that we took on this couch with the light coming in were black and white photos. I turn off all the lights in the house. I'm only getting one single light source. I have additional lighting that I bring in when I do photo shoots or when I do headshots. But if you intentionally shoot for black and white photography, you want to create contrast. You want to create shadows, highlights. You need to know where those fall. Using a window, if you're a beginner, that's a great way to just play with it. You don't need expensive lighting. You don't need any of that. You just need a good window. You want a window that's north facing, so you're going to get filtered light. Any time of day works, though. You can produce an image similar to this. Obviously, whatever everyone's style is different. But I knew it would be black and white. The nice thing with digital is that we can make that decision after the fact. If you were to shoot this scene again, what might you do different? I might have, again, I feel like it's, I keep saying this on every photo, but pulling back a little bit from the scene, maybe not having it so dark on the, on that one side of the dad's face where the, the natural shadows fell, that's probably what I may have done. I may have also made it horizontal, had a little bit more negative space in the photo. Gotcha. I think I could have, because it was a large enough scene, but it was so quick. This was just like one of those moments where I, I shot it so quickly. The one thing about lens baby, my next goal moving forward with the Soul 45 is to just pause for a second. I feel like my initial goal is always find that slice of focus, find your composition, your slice of focus. But if I just take a step back, I could maybe find two different compositions. But again, that takes practice. You have to be brave to do that in someone's home. Oh, Having yeah. more negative space, I think I would have liked. That's move away from those images. It was great to hear the story behind them. You, you put a lot of thought into what you're doing, what you might do next time. It sounds like being able to back up on all three of these was something that you might have done to, to have a broader frame and potentially crop in afterwards or change your composition a little bit. I just want to comment too that with the Soul 45, you can move back a little bit and just crop a little bit to get that sweet spot just a little bit bigger. Right. That's a good thing to remember. Last question I have for you, Julie, is when you find yourself in a creative funk, what's one thing that you do to get out of that? I put my lens babies on. I do. I'll normally ask my kiddo, let's go up into the foothills, let's go for a walk, or I'll take it out and photograph nature. We live in such a beautiful state that I love challenging myself with that. But I shoot for myself when I find myself in a creative rut. So whether that's self-portraiture or whether that's taking the camera out, having no pressure to fulfill someone's requirement of me is the best way for me to get myself out of that. Lens Baby has helped me tremendously. If I'm, if I'm feeling icky about what I'm producing or need to challenge myself, that's why I started taking the Soul 45 mm -hmm. or the Sweet 35 in the Composer Pro or the double glass. I took a, the double glass the other day to a shoot. It, it makes it fun. It makes it like, I'm going to do something different. The Soul 45, I have so much confidence with that lens that I know I can produce something fun. To get out of your creative funk, you've got to pull out a lesser used lens, baby. Go shoot something that you don't shoot every day. I know I should. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you're doing it. So good for you. Thank you so much for sharing these three images that you shot with the Soul 45. Your thoughts behind them, your process is great for all of us because we're going out and saying, okay, how can I do this a little bit different? Julie did it a certain way and maybe I can apply some of the things that she brought to her shoots. It's going to be in my vision. It's going to be part of my world. Maybe I can bring those in, have a, a very personal impact that by the way you see the world. Now I'm going to see these images in a new light. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored when people 
want to know what I use and what I would pick when people ask me for help with the lens baby. I love it. I love being able to help someone else get out of a creative rut or shoot extraordinary or try something new. Yeah. You're out there creating art for families that are treasures. You've shown us a couple of them here that, uh, that are just really powerful. Your family and another family, and you've got your model who is kind of part of your family too, because you spent a lot of time shooting her. She is. They become my family over the years and I continue photographing them year after year. It's cool. How great is it that we, we can do this amazing thing, which is freeze time in a unique way bring our vision artistically through photography. We can create a a dozen masterpieces in a day. It's an amazing medium. So I'm glad you've embraced it. I'm glad you found Lens Baby to help you do that. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for joining me today, Julie, and for sharing your three photo shot with your Soul 45. I look forward to seeing more. I want to see that time lapse of the (laughs) state fair now because you spent so much time on it. I'm sure you've got 100 images or more. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too, Craig.